Thanks, Kelly, for stopping by. We're going to focus the remainder of this episode on the weatherization process. Kelly mentioned the flow of money from the federal level to the states, onto the local agencies, and finally into the homes of clients. Now let's take a more detailed look at the steps involved. To date, about 6.2 million homes have been weatherized under the program, but there are millions of families out there who still need assistance. Getting the word out to these folks is the first step in the weatherization process. On the federal, state, and local levels, groups are getting the word out with billboards, TV, and radio ads. The money is spent here on promotion and recruitment to ensure the pool of applicants is large enough to include clients who really need the help. The Weatherization Assistance Program, or WAP, is an energy efficiency program that helps low-income households manage the increasingly high cost of energy. Its mission is to reduce energy costs for low-income families, particularly for the elderly, people with disabilities, and children, by improving the energy efficiency of their homes while ensuring their health and safety. Most of the WAP funding makes its way directly into the state and local agencies. Here, applications are screened and eligibility is based on income. The cutoff in most cases is 200% of the poverty level for the state. Within the pool of eligible applicants, priority may be determined based on current fuel consumption for the family, immediate need, the presence of children, people with disabilities or the elderly, or even a first-come, first-served basis. Once an applicant is selected, the auditor will sit down with the information on the property and determine the best course of action for an initial site visit. The auditor is looking for things like the age of the property, the size and layout if available prior to the site visit, the type of HVAC system used for heating and cooling the property, and any special considerations like the age or health of occupants. An initial site visit is arguably the most important step in the weatherization process. If done correctly, the process will pinpoint deficiencies in a home that will ultimately save money and increase the overall comfort of the living space. So it can start anywhere, but the two primary components include a combustion appliance safety analysis and a building shell analysis. So for more on combustion appliance safety, we're going to go into the furnace lab and talk to our buddy Mike. Well, hey there, Mike. How you doing? Good, man. How are you? I'm doing all right. Weatherization. Why are we even taking a look at the furnaces? Well, one of the things that a furnace that isn't running correctly can kick out is it can kick out a whole lot of carbon monoxide. And uh, when we go to weatherize a home, typically these homes have a lot of air infiltration. That air infiltration may be masking the carbon monoxide and actually diluting it. Uh, when we do a weatherization measure, we typically do a lot of air sealing. That reduces the amount of air that comes into the home. And uh, then we may see if the furnace is not working correctly, we might start to see the effects of the carbon monoxide. I see. Gotcha. So we're going to tighten up the home. We're keeping all that bad stuff inside and we don't want that. Yeah, if the furnace isn't working correctly, then that percentage of carbon monoxide is going to go up and it's a deadly gas. So Mike, what are we looking for when we're talking about a furnace not working properly? Well, what, one of the things we're looking for is we want to make sure that the uh, flue pipe and the chimney system is installed correctly and has the ability to remove all the combustion products from the furnace and get it outside. We also want to make sure that there is not a negative pressure that creates a backdraft that actually pulls the combustion gases back into the home. We also uh, measure the uh, amount of carbon monoxide that the furnace puts out it should be below a certain threshold that tells us that it's burning the fuel and the oxygen correctly. Another one of the big things that we look for is we look for how much car combustion air is coming into the room. Does the, the uh, appliance, is it receiving the proper amount of combustion air? We also look for cracked heat exchangers. We want to make sure those combustion products aren't being delivered into the home as well. And then we look for uh, potential for gas leaks. We look for the potential for uh, f what's called flame rollout, which is typically caused by delayed ignition, where the flames actually roll out of the, the uh, furnace during an, an ignition. So Mike, you mentioned uh, gas leaks. Uh, pretty common thing, are they? Uh, you know, they're not real common, but uh, 
if we find them, we want to make sure we get them taken care of. The uh, utility company puts a scent in the gas. A lot of times the homeowner would smell that, although they may not recognize it. And so if we come across it, we're going to fix it. More importantly, probably, is there may be CO gas, carbon monoxide gas. That's colorless, it's odorless. The homeowner wouldn't even know that it's in their house. They, there's no way for them to even determine that it's there unless they have a CO detector. Uh, just to give you an idea how dangerous this gas is, 0.04%, not 4%, but 0.04% is equivalent to 400 parts per million CO. And in within three hours, that would cause death. So it takes a very little bit, little amount of CO to get into your, uh, into your living area and you can um, become poisoned and it can even cause death. Not a good thing. So every homeowner needs one of these babies attached to their furnace, huh, Mike? No, this normally wouldn't be attached to the <laughs> furnace. This is one of the tools we use to determine how much carbon monoxide this furnace is kicking right. out. We use it to measure how well this flue pipe is drafting. And we also can get the combustion analysis and determine how efficient this furnace is operating. So if not one of these, what does a homeowner use? Uh, they use a carbon monoxide detector. We recommend that all homeowners have a carbon monoxide detector in their home. Just the kind that plugs into the wall? Yep, yep. All right, well, good deal. Well, we sure appreciate you taking us through the, uh, the ABCs of combustion safety, and uh, hope to see you again back here at uh, WXTV. Sure, you bet. Thanks, Mike. You're welcome. The building shell analysis typically starts with a blower door test. Well, this green tube we put through here, which is going to tell us we bring the house to a negative 50 pascals, and uh, that green hoses our reference to tell us what the uh, air pressure is outside, and then we can it'll compare it to inside. So we're we're blowing air out of the house, reducing the air pressure in here, which then air will come in through all the cracks and crevices. No, we will oftentimes, if you find enough big leaks, and depending on what you're starting out with, you'll know, okay, if we fix those leaks, we're going to have a pretty tight house, so we don't really need, we don't really need to go around and caulk all the baseboard and all that stuff, which isn't going to add up to a whole lot. But if you have like, uh, you're getting down towards the minimum, say, but you can't find anything big, there's just nothing really big and juicy you can just clog up. Then you start going after those little bunch of little stuff. We've been making houses pretty tight. Uh, even just the insulation you put in a mobile, like if you can insulate all around in a mobile, oh, yeah. you can drop the air down three, 400 CFM just doing that. Yeah. And you gotta be careful when you already have a tight house and you don't wanna, you know, over tighten with, without, you know, without calling out any infiltration to do, right. you're gonna make the house too tight house up to negative 50 pascals every house you try to bring it up to that and the fan will have to work at a different rate to in order to achieve that negative 50. Um, so tight house the fan will just whisper barely be moving big old farmhouse it'll be you won't even get it up to 50. you'll have to use a multiplying factor in order to, to get your So we're like 1600, right over 1600 CFM. So there's definitely things to do. Uh, 1390 is the minimum for this house in this area. So we really only have uh, about 250 CFM to find. Shouldn't be too hard. <laughs> 